Hey everybody, it's May 21st, 2018, the last day of the month, and this is News Break, and I'm Alex Bennett. Let's start looking at the news because we got a lot of it today. Our government announced today it's going to impose tariffs on steel and aluminum imports from Europe, Mexico, and Canada after failing to win concessions from American allies. Europe and Mexico pledged to retaliate quickly. What that means is probably that car price is going to go up, okay? Uh, and it exacerbates transatlantic and North American trade tensions, which have been growing. The stock market is down today because of it. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said the tariffs would be 25% on steel, 10% on aluminum, as some of those foreign countries refer to it. President Donald Trump, now this is the first time we mentioned him, and the reason we only mention Donald Trump on any newscast is if something takes place that is significant, and this is, he announced today he'll pardon Dinesh D'Souza, a conservative filmmaker convicted in 2014 for making illegal campaign contributions. The president tweeted, we'll be giving full pardon to Dinesh D'Souza today. He was treated very unfairly by our government. If you remember this guy, he's the guy that turned out the anti-Hillary documentary that was circulating uh, about the time the election was taking place, asserting all kinds of lies. You want to talk about fake news? D'Souza is the leader of that. He's an alt-right guy and many believe to be an ardent racist. A senior North Korean f official, Kim Jong-chol, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, boy, I can't talk today, so please excuse me, had dinner in New York as Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un try to salvage prospects for a high-stakes nuclear summit. He's the highest official to visit the United States from North Korea in 18 years since the Clinton administration. By the way, if, if you don't know who this guy is, you remember the Olympics and you remember uh, Ivanka Trump sitting next to somebody from North Korea. Well, that was Kim Young Chol. That's how his name is pronounced. Uh, a grand jury in New York City has formally indicted movie producer Harvey Weinstein on rape charges, so uh, he's gonna go on trial. Um, the uh, charges stem from an incident in 2004 when Lucia Evans said Weinstein forced her to perform oral sex on him. Another unnamed woman accused Weinstein of raping her in 2013. Now this is a strange, strange story, and I don't get it exactly. As many times as I've read it, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what was going on here, but there's a Russian journalist, and his name is Arkady Babchenenko, and he surprised everyone Wednesday by showing up alive at a news conference on Ukrainian television a day after he was reported dead telling reporters his death was faked as part of a special intelligence operation. Ukraine's uh, security service said the operation foiled a real attempt against his life. You got it? The guy was dead, now he's alive, and he was dead because they wanted to foil an attempt. Strange things go on in the, in the Soviet Union and the Ukraine when it comes to political retaliation. In the wake of the whole Roseanne Twitter debacle, a perennial troublemaker has decided it was a good time to get in his own shots. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Charlie Sheen sent out a tweet hammering Roseanne and making a pitch for bringing back his old show, which of course was Two and a Half Men. Sheen provided a good riddance in response to Roseanne's demise, along with what may be a Charlie Sheen insult in which he wrote not winning <laughs> he added the message the runway is now clear for our reboot yeah like after all the goodwill you left behind chuck blore is going to want to bring you back and do two and a half men probably bring it back but maybe with aston kutcher now let's turn to sports and i must turn to sports occasionally because let me reach over here i do have this emmy 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this in fact is my sports Emmy. A lot of people don't believe I ever won a sports Emmy, but I have it. And every now and then I have to do a sports story. Otherwise, they come to my house and take it back from me. Okay, so there it is. There's the Emmy. Okay, all right? All right. Lars Eller had a two goal and two assists while uh, Braden Holtby uh, stood strong in the Washington Capitals 3-2 win against the Var Las Vegas Golden Knights in game. You see, this is why I should have never been a sports reporter. Can I try that from the top? A take two, I have an Emmy, okay? Lars Eller had a goal and two assists while Braden Holtby stood strong in the Washington Capitals 3-2 win against the Las Vegas Golden Knights in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. And now I have a two-shot here. This not only will allow me to keep the Emmy uh, for sports, but it will also allow me to uh, have goodwill with my wife, who absolutely loves this woman. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, a nice picture, uh, courtesy of Reuters, who took the picture, so I want to give them credit. This is, of course, the wonderful, wonderful uh, Serena Williams, and she's playing in the French Open, and after a 14-month absence from the tennis tournament scene following the birth of her daughter, uh, her butt's a little bigger there, if you notice. Serena Williams made her come back to the court on Tuesday at the French Open in a warrior cat suit that had a very powerful message. She said, it feels like this suit represents all the women that have been through a lot mentally, physically, with their body to come back and have confidence and believe in themselves. Good for you, Serena. One of the all time sports greats, no question asked. It's just terrific. And finally, last night on our little uh, uh, doodad show, The uh, Ramble, we had a citizen panel, and uh, Patrick brought up a, uh, uh, a note he had sent me earlier the day via Facebook, which you can do as well, and, uh, uh, well, listen to what he had to say. That thing that I sent you this morning, mm -hmm. uh, CNN uh, uh, trying to explain why you can't cancel the president like you can cancel Roseanne. Uh, if, I was, if I was a liberal, I would feel insulted that CNN felt that they would have to explain that you can't cancel a president. And sometimes these news outfits do stuff that is exceedingly stupid. Okay, and that was, of course, one of them. Thank you, Patrick. You can see our Citizens Panel and the Ramble every night, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday through Friday. You can go right to here so you can see the picture. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett forward slash live. And if, if you put that in your browser, uh, what will come up is a player, and that player, if you like tab it on your browser so it's there all the time, will just be there with a countdown to the show, and when the show starts, it automatically happens. You can also see the live show over at gabnet.net. You can also hear the program over at gabnet.net when it's live. Then after the fact, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on iTunes, we're on uh, live stream. Uh, are we anywhere else? I think we're a couple of other places, too. Go to the gabnet.net page, and you'll find out all the places you can find us after the fact. See you tonight, and then hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow uh, when we do more of this little thing we like to call news break. Have a nice day, everybody.